Good evening from Sacred Space at Titania's Well. It's the 14th of May 2024 and the time is Brisbane time 5.55 p.m. I've had a lovely day. I had a, a, a telehealth um, appointment with my beautiful, talented urologist this morning and um, that was a little bit um, concerning because uh, there's all these options that we have to still explore and, um, you know, my, with my bladder and uh, Botox is still an option but I'm not real thrilled about the concept of having botulism injected into me every six months and that's just me dragging the chain because I'm also worried about, you know, dying under anaesthesia that uh, it, 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 it happened briefly after my gallbladder surgery so that's why I'm a little bit reticent. Um, the other option that should be discussed is that I get um, like a kind of a nerve stimulation thing done where they poke a needle at you um, weekly for 12 weeks so I think that's going to be the next thing we try and um, oh dear goddess I said to her, I just feel awful because I'm not getting much rest and um, it, the whole thing goes round and round in circles and I drag the chain on the Botox and, um, you know, it's um, a psychiatrist is willing to pay for it, by the way, but it's, you know, it's going to be over a $1,000 and I'm not happy about him, you know. I mean, he's happy to pay, but I'm not happy about that and also the fact that... Um, botulism people botulism and uh, <laughs> so I'm being a bit of a baby um, the other option she said is um, to use a TENS machine to stimulate the nerve with that uh, the other option is to put some kind of patch on for the solifenison but I, I can't see the point of putting a patch of solifenison on which she said isn't as quite as good when the solifenison tablets aren't really helping so it's kind of a dilemma really it's just finding something that'll quell the nervous system and um it's astonishing and the other option that she stressed is very important is that i um i get some kind of cpap machine and treat the um sleep apnea which again I'm not fucking thrilled about because I did try it in 2003 for 10 months and it didn't work. But um, my, my psychiatrist is trying to find a, um, a trauma-aware sleep specialist or you know they are both sleep and respiratory specialists to deal with my sleep apnea. So it's like, um, it just seems like an insurmountable freaking obstacle course that no sooner I jump one hurdle there's another and another and another and I don't know I'm just tired <laughs> tired and wrung out but anyway after I had my telehealth appointment I drove to my hairdresser Kylie so my hair's been done I'm going to be one of the most beautiful corpses that anyone's ever seen it's a joke people it's a, a quote from um, Chicago a song in Chicago um, cabaret come to the cabaret my friends and uh, yes and uh, it's kind of a, a motif from my life since I dance wildly in clubs energetically and the rest of the week I'm a beautiful zombie corpse but um, I had a wonderful time this weekend and I'm very I'm very happy and satisfied I'm just uh just a bit tired, but it's got nothing to do with the dance. It's got to do with the um, the bladder, constant overactivity and the lack of sleep, people. So I just want to remind those of you fellow music scene people that from complaining about exhaustion, the dance is the least of my problems, although it does expend quite a bit of um, psychic and physical energy and emotional energy and um, it's good exercise, it's good for me, which is why I do it. But I do pay afterwards for the next few days. So um, anyway, but I, I'm going to continue to do it because it is good for me. 
and when I when my bladder issues get settled down if they do I'll be able to dance two or even three nights perhaps well that's a bit ambitious two nights two nights of the weekend is enough but um it's baby steps at the moment because uh you know I've still got I've got still got to sort this uh this bladder situation out and the sleep apnea, apnea situation and um, drops maybe drop some more weight and um, although I have lost three kilos without trying which is a bit freaky man but then it could be from I have constant proper cardio workout now when I go dancing because the bands that I follow play harder rock music so I get to get that real you know energetic dance which I wasn't getting for the last couple of years dancing at the Treasury Casino because they um they discouraged the harder more vigorous rock music and they were playing weird boring mainstream you know what do you call it music that I couldn't really get a workout to so um I'm thinking the weight loss might be partly because of the yeah get, getting the more vigorous cardio dance right Maybe, or maybe it's the drug it's knocked me around a bit, might have um, contributed to weight loss. But I'm not worried about losing weight. I've always been overweight, so weight loss is good. It's a good way to fix my sleep apnea, actually. That's probably the only real cure for it, is to drop 30 kilos, you know, which is like the size of a small person, so it's a lot. I don't really... 30 kilos might be too much. Yeah, maybe 25. Anyway, I'm not worried about my weight. I've never I've never been one to focus on that because I've always had a very, very healthy, vigorous, extreme appetite. So I try not to sweat the small stuff and put pressure on myself about being overweight because it's counterproductive for me because my rebellious nature if I stress about it I eat even more and act out so I am healthy I am beautiful I am powerful I am that I am becoming I am truly greatly loved and cared for and respected and tolerated and in some you know, with some some of my friends even adored, and everything has its season. And you know, when I get healthier and I can dance even more, then the weight will come off even more, and eventually I'll reach homeostasis where I'm strong and healthy enough to um, live a really good life and not have all this anxiety about bladders and sleep apnea. And all that weird, you know, unpleasantness that I've been going through for the past eight years. Anyway, enough about that. Um, had wonderful chat with my hairdresser, who's oh, she's a wonderful woman. She really is. And um, we had a good old natter about, you know, life and where I'm at the moment. And uh, it's very soul nourishing. Plus, I come out looking glamorous, and. Uh, she did my eyebrows, did my eyelashes. So I look all schmick for the next time I go out for my wild dance. Look, no black roots, all very, all very adorable people. Just add a bit of makeup and lipstick and colour. I'll be out there again, strutting my stuff. Am I right? I'm right. So anyway, today's readings of even date, memories 14th of May 2024 are titled, in quotation marks, I've been deader for longer than most people have been alive. That's true people, there's a reason why the song Zombie by the Cranberries is my war cry, my um, yeah, potent potent war cry as I have lived that lifestyle for decades babies 
Here is a beautiful photo of my beautiful, much beloved, gorgeous boy. My Beauregard. And uh, let's try and. How did I scroll down? Oh, that's right with this. Let's scroll down. No. See, I always stuff it up, don't I? Oh, here we are. I'll try scrolling down. Where are we? There we are. There's the rest of his face. Oh, regard. 12th of May, 2018. My goodness. My goodness, where does time go? Kylie asked me today if I was thinking about getting another dog, and I said, I just... I just can't put myself through the emotional wetting and whelping and sadism of sadistic vets when I'm broke and vulnerable and my animals get life-threatening events. They're just so cruel and awful. I can't, I can't do it anymore. But then part of me, <laughs> part of me would dearly love another dog, but, you know, I can't replace Beauregard or Bella Rosa, all the cats, each, each, little being had their own unique personality and heart and soul and sweetness and it's just me and Charlie now and I think I think that that will be I think that that's enough for quite some time and um, I would need a fair fair amount of money to be able to afford a um, another dog and um, you know be able to maintain all the vet costs and food and all the things that go with it so I'm just gonna, yeah, glide gracefully by and, you know, what the gods decree, the gods decree. It's just another, you're seeing me here, but that's just another photo I threw up on Facebook because whenever I get my hair done, it's so rare that I look glamorous and schmick because my hair's, you know, does its own thing usually. So when I come from my hairdresser, I always like to have a nice photo taken and when I look, um, you know, lovely and freshly quaffed. Because tomorrow I will look scruffy again, you can guarantee it. Some women, there's some women that can get out of bed and run a brush through their hair and they always look perfect and my hair just, it's like freaking Medusa, it just does whatever it wants, whatever and I've given up, you know, stressing about it. I just accept that I look good when I come home from the hairdresser and the rest of the time, well, I, anything happens, people. 14th of May, 2023. Posted two YouTube videos, which I don't have the titles of, but pretty sure will be me making jewellery on this channel. So it's all up there, people. Here I write, 2023, quiet day. I had a call from Crystal for Mother's Day. Then I raked up all the autumn leaves and burned them in my fire pit. Now I stink of smoke and ashes, baby. Smouldering in my last hurrah on planet Earth. It's all good. My lungs are not too bad, so I think I am over the worst of that nasty cold. I got from sitting in the rain at drumming. It was not a good idea, Tanya Phillips Aarons. But anyway, it's taken five days, but I'm getting stronger. Mind you, I fought through the worst of it, even with a fever, by polishing my opal for two days. Healer, heal thyself. Manic denial is a thing. <laughs> Just ask my psychiatrist. <laughs> oh my gosh. What doesn't kill you doesn't kill you, but it makes you strange and berserker, determined to succeed in all undertakings before the undertaker shuffles me off my perch permanently. Well, won't be the undertaker shuffling me off my perch, but I'm sure they'll be hanging around avidly for the um, the blessed remains and the disposing of what's left of me after I've been uh, turned into charcoal. It is what it is. 
Like a small wizened lowly bird, I hover over my tiny perch, guarding my sacred space on the earth as fiercely as any other spirit cleaving to this mortal coil. I had hoped for great and magical things, a true love, true love, a partner and a loving family surrounding me on days like this, but not to be. Oh well, shit. I will have to keep manifesting and being my own lover, partner, mother, daughter of the gods. Say la vie, bougie mama, got this. My daughter had taken to calling me bougie mama, which I was deeply offended by because I am not bougie at all. In fact, I'm very down to earth. So I got really, really irate about it. And then after a while, I saw the funny side and I just decided to own it. Like, you want me to be bougie? Oh, darling, can I be bougie for you? But anyway, I just, yeah. I wasn't happy about that, that title. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who mothered and men who had to take on the nurturing role too. Um, talking about magical things this morning, I did my, I haven't done it for a long time and I thought, mm, 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 mm. since I live literally at sacred space under the auspices of Titania's realm, Titania being Queen Titania of the Forest Fae, and uh, fairy-like offerings being made to them regularly. And I haven't made an offering to them for months. I've been making little offerings to the voodoo god Papa Legba because, well, he doesn't, he doesn't suffer fools. And um, if you start something, people, you've got to keep it up. You just can't just... Even gods don't like being teased and tormented and have lovely gifts given to them and then withheld. It's just not cricket. So um, I was talking about it with my friend Jared and I said, oh, I have to activate the mojo at sacred space. I haven't made offerings to the Fae in months and I have a sense that they're not real happy with me right about now and I certainly don't want to make them angry. It's it's not I haven't withheld offerings out of spite. I've just been, you know, busy with making videos and you know, up until two months ago making jewellery and struggling with my health and you know, distracted and the dance on the weekends. And Jared reminded me, he said, It's not nice. The Fae will take retribution if you don't do the right thing by them, which is true. He said, you better get busy making some more offerings, Tanya. It is a practice that you began and you need to keep it up. And he's quite correct. He's quite correct. So this morning I made um, a little milk jug with milk and honey and I did my shamanic blessings to the four directions and I... Um, you know, made the offerings to the Fae and I hope, I hope and I pray that they accept my offering and that they're um, feeling a bit more peaceful and appeased with me. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm grateful. I still haven't found that missing earring though. It's not why I did the offerings though, because I know it's around the house somewhere. But yeah, little little tricks to things like when they hide things from me and just lets me know they want to be um, acknowledged and remembered and honoured, which is, you know, fair. And uh, as usual, I asked, asked for their protection of my home and land here, sacred space. So, you know, it's all very... It's all very lovely and then I felt a bit, you know, I felt a bit soul nourished and thought, right, I'm in service to them and if they assist me in any way then I'm grateful and it's um 
it's a relationship that you build, like any friendship or relationship, a relationship of trust and respect and honour and integrity and keeping your word and, you know, standing by your belief systems and honouring your responsibilities. So I felt better about that. I've got enough milk and honey left over to make an offering again to them tomorrow. I don't usually do it daily, but it's been months and months, so it wouldn't hurt to give it two days in a row, I don't think. And um, just had, um, I've just had such a lovely day, which I probably would have had anyway, because the weather's been lovely, and you know, I've been with my hairdresser, who's also a friend of mine, and my beautiful Lynn's coming to see me tomorrow morning and then tomorrow afternoon I have my debrief with my handsome psychiatrist. So tomorrow will be, a, you know, a busy day with companionship and um, a debrief, my, my regular debrief. So that should be a lovely day. And then Thursday, Rati, my cleaning lady, comes and that will be nice and a lovely morning. So yes, I'm having lots of interactions this week and it's gorgeous. And um, then Friday comes and in the night, late at night, <gasps> Mama T does the dance. So yes, this is going to be a very lovely week and I'm very contented. Uh, right, 14th of May 2022. I posted a memory from 2014. <laughs> oh, you have to laugh at how my mind works. Here I wrote in 2014, mind you. All I want is a room somewhere, in brackets, check. Far away from the cold night air, check. And sit in one enormous chair, in brackets, I have my mother's couch. Well, I no longer have that couch, but I have a lovely leather couch to sit in. Lots of chocolate for me to eat. Grr, I would be binging now if I had my car. Someone's head resting on my knee. No comment. I have cats, though. Bear in mind, this was 2014. So don't even have the cats anymore. Warm hands, warm face, warm feet, check. Oh, wouldn't it be lovely? And in brackets, lover to be continued and hogtied to my bed. I was joking about the hogtying to my bed, people. My lovers will come to me of free will, from their own heart, mind, body, soul, spirit, joyously and happy and excited and appreciatingly and grateful to be my man, right? Am I right? That's how it has to work, people. Free will, no more unrequited, horrible, heartbreaking, shitty, vapid love affairs and um, no more triangulations either because... That's not nice when that happens. And anyway, so my comment from 2022 on that memory says, laughing out loud, nothing changes if nothing changes. I was too exhausted to go dancing this evening. Almost time for bed. No hogtied men in my boudoir. No willing ones either. Man-free zone. Lila Tov, it's 12.18 a.m. I kind of have to giggle at that. It's still apparently a man-free zone, but not particularly by choice, just the circumstances have not arisen for, um, yes, someone to be in my life as an intimate sexual partner. But as I say, I'm grateful and happy with my true friends. Every day and every way, 
I'm grateful for my friends. 14th of May 2021, 9.27am, slept from 5am, grrr, not enough sleep. I was awake all night. While not sleeping, but at least lying supine to rest my fat, middle-aged hormonal body, I made new friends on the Bling Group, a woman in Germany. Her jewellery is amazing. I was chatting to her in my basic German and it was awkward as I had to explain that my mother was German but we only spoke English at home which is why my German is so poor. Thank God for translations, laughing out loud. She asked for my Instagram page so I looked at hers while she looked at mine. Another woman from the group followed me on Instagram. I thought it was wonderful how we all support each other in our creativity. It's truly inspiring and lovely to feel so supported. After about an hour and a half, I finally fell asleep. A relief. I only got up at midday yesterday and had spent the day in a kind of haze of exhaustion from insomnia the night before that, but got busy in the afternoon, sawing the inlaid timber, drunk, drunk, drink, tr drunk, drink, drink trolley top. Gah! My energies are all over the place. I feel quite discombobulated, i.e., Shaken, not stirred, like a dry martini, but without the bonding license to kill. Meh. I really need a drink, people. I just had dinner not long ago, but I've only had a cup of tea at Kylie's, and that was hours ago, and I ate my dinner, and I haven't had a drink. Let's go. i got to get a drink of water, at least. I'm actually really thirsty. And I'm not supposed to drink after 7pm because of my very, very energetic, overworking, workaholic, obsessive, compulsive, crazy bladder, am I right? So, um, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm like really freaking parched. I'm parched, people. I am parched. I'll have a peach iced tea, which is not good because it's more tea, but oval. You get that. I, <clears throat> I should have just water, but I'm naughty. I'm naughty. This is why I have problems, people. Anyway, I've got to use it up. My beautiful Lynn bought me, and I've only drunk half of it. So I've got to drink it because um, it's delicious. It's my favourite thing, peach iced tea, and yeah. Very good, very, very good indeed. Hmm, it's an interesting energy in the kitchen. It's like, hmm, very high vibration. It's probably just me though. Uh, right, here we go. Back in the room, back in the light, back in the kit in the living room. Yes, there's a high vibration in here too. It's probably because the fairies are happy that I gave them an offering and acknowledged them. Everyone likes to be valued and appreciated for their their spirit and their essence, including me and even little Charlie. Everyone wants to be loved and acknowledged, am I right? So, anyway, here we continue reading. <sighs> I've forgotten what year that was. I'm just going to scroll back. 2021, right. The height of all the COVID insanity. Pardon me. <clears throat> I bought um, chicken, Japanese chicken. Japanese chicken teriyaki at Noodle Box and 
It was delicious, but now I'm thirsty. Um, 1.11 p.m. Come on, angels. You know what to do. Much love and blessings. Please and thank you. Protection from all negativity. Gifts of abundance and prosperity. Truest, deepest love. Better health. Even good health. Thank you for opening me up to even further creativity. Please protect my most sacred of spaces. My home, my garden, my pets, my heart, mind, body and spirit. And I might as well say soul as well. And my family and friends. This is how I pray, people. And it's kind of interesting that I chose today, of the same date, years later to have the same kind of prayer with my offerings to the fairy realms so synchronicity and perfect timing in the same timelines is um but astonishing actually allow me the life i always prayed for dreamed about tried hard to manifest with my inherent formidable stymieing sabotaging traumas out of the ashes and bones of the old life i shed many skins even now shedding with skin cancers and older age vulnerabilities i realize how powerful and wise my god goddesses angels fay and life force truly is truly are thank you to the holy one and all manifestations i could not be in this moment without you capital y o u later i wrote no shabbat shalom and Chag Sameach for Shavuot, which is a Jewish holiday. It's a harvest festival. My beautiful Irish Jewish friend Louise reminded me it is Shavuot this evening. I had no idea. This year it'll probably be a month, a month late because we're in um, Adar too and everything's delayed by a month. So to... Uh, align with the lunar cycle so there it is what it is people it's a bit confusing though because anyway i haven't exactly observed any of the chagim this year except for hanukkah last year and um i didn't observe passover properly i just you know wished everyone happy passover and that's as good as it kind of got but anyway i um the Holy One and I, sort of, kind of. Today I worked like someone, uh, today I worked like someone had set a dibuk right up my tuchus. On four hours sleep, tuchus means ass people, and a dibuk is a, um, spirit that invades the body of a living person like um kind of a possession and rides them like a bitch and uses them until they drop dead kind of thing they're particularly malevolent evil spirits but um having been a zombie huh, i was would have been the perfect vessel for a dibuk and even in those times so it's quite miraculous that I've come out okay, to be honest. But don't make me angry. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm joking about that. Well, no, not really. You want to see what a dibble look looks like? Go ahead, make me really, really angry. Which is why I try to avoid that scenario. It's not good, people. Anyway, on four hours sleep, I sanded and sanded back that inlaid piece of timber 
until I could not bear to look at it or go near it any longer. It's pretty much what happens when I burn out. Ooh. I have hurt my back and twisted my neck. Arg, it. I really did work hard on that. I finished up around 3.33 p.m. when young Harrison stopped by to say hello. Sweet lad. Then he went on his way and I packed everything away, then took a shower to wash off the wood and polyurethane dust that are probably clogging up my lungs too, which is actually a great worry. Did a fair bit of damage to my lungs in those days. I think I was a bit fucking borderline suicidal with all the COVID epoch. So I would just do this risk-taking kind of behaviours like cutting up power or old trolley, drinks trolleys without a proper respiratory mask. And I showed you a photo of me in the respiratory mask yesterday. But it wasn't really efficient enough. But it was better than what I was doing, which was had no protection at all. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, well, <clears throat> I'm alive and I'm kicking on. So let's, let's not worry too much about it. And, um, you know, I'm happy and contented with my creativity. And life goes on, people. And I am much more protective of my lungs now, although it's probably too little too late, to be honest. I promised Beauregard and Charlie a wee walkies. Charlie hurried down from the tree, and off we went. I said hello to my Scottish neighbour and his dear little boy, Lachlan, who was pretending to shoot me with a bow and arrow. That'd be right. I said, you must be a true Celt or a Viking shooting your poor Tanya neighbour down. They better be arrows of love, my lovely, as I've already been deader for longer than most people alive. The infant Viking kept shooting. I played along. I said, what will happen if you kill me for real, little Lachlan? I hope I won't be back as a baby, as I've had quite enough of this reincarnating stuff. Little baby Alice, safe in her father's arms, shot me a radiant look of glee, grinned and drooled. I said... I know, Alice, I know. Your angel people just told you that I will be back and I am silly as a wheel. She laughed even more as only the very young or young at heart still have that connection to the ancestors and the angels. I think she was about six months old at the time. But she laughed and laughed as if she knew exactly what I was talking about. It was a little bit astonishing, to be honest. Sweet little baby. Anyway, they've sold the house since then and moved away, which is, you know, I miss the children. They were sweet little children. Chris quipped that Alice thinks it's, perfectly fi it's a perfectly fine thing to be a baby Everything gets done for them. I gently patted her, uh, her arm and softened for a moment. Aye, tis a fine thing indeed to be a happy baby in a loving, safe environment. I won't spoil that for her with my hard-bitten, cantankerous, blood-curdling bitterness that sits like a canker on my soul. I felt a momentary pang of grief as even my infancy 
had been sullied and stolen from. But where were we? I digressed. Arrows of love. What do the Irish say? Jesus, Mary and Josephine? Only the gods and wild infant children can love me now, Snickers. I carried on with my promenade around Sapphire Street. I stopped to say hello to my furry beloved Miss Coco. Peter kindly lent me three G clamps so I can finish my latest project in the next few days. His 91 year old mother, Elsa, insisted I come inside to admire the new photographs of all the grandchildren. Lovely. She loves our little mad chats. Oh, bless. I came home and I'm sitting on the couch in a sort of numb state. My ears are ringing from the noise of the random orbital sander all day. My hands are aching. My neck is creaking. Frankly, I could do with a good drink. This pristine, hard-working, rat-wheel existence is killing me very, very slowly. But, l'chaim, life is good. 14th of May, 2020. I am eating cake for breakfast because I can and I am enjoying the sweetness of life in my mouth. It is grounding and pleasurable, and who cares about the liver overburdened with sugar, or the calories, or the excess baggage in the saggage. My loose caboose is not for every man, but fulfills the vessel of my heart's desires. The right person will love me in all manifestations, even my big hobbits' feet firmly, stolidly planted on holy ground. Gaia, while my mind spins on a dime and trips the light fantastic. What news from the multiverses? Love the skin. You are in. To your own self be true. Remain authentic and fiercely defend your hard-won freedoms. Stay in love, even with the unrequited ones, Jesus. As love is the life force and fabric of the universe, and it will send you a little crazy, Okay, okay, a lot crazy. But like Lot's wife, you will become a pillar of salt if you cry a lot over nothing, as all the time it was merely an illusion and you were the beloved all along. So come here, ye old Celtic warriors. Lick my salty eyeballs and comprehend my truth. I see you and you over there shaking your ass in intrepid denial. Yes, Tanya is guilty as charged. And you over there in dark corners shaking with anticipation as you stroke your lingam, I see the urge to merge the life forces strong with you. But, um, can you practice a little self-restraint in public places and sacred spaces, most holy and profound? Aye. Let the Tanya eat her cake 
for she lost her head to the Red Queen that spawned her and scorned her. But she grew it back. Fifty-five years of reconfiguring and recovery. Too much, too little, too late. But here we are. You and me, baby, cowering in COVID cowardice while the world turns. Blessed be the gods who sustained me and brought me to this season. Amen, Visala. And onwards and upwards, sublimely sublimating our subliminal legends of lingam type performance because the cock supreme hath crowed thrice oh sorry twice and yet she remains in substantial love and magnificence <laughs> Some of you will know why that's funny and why it's an in-joke, but never mind. Broken but stoic and somewhat triumphant. Until next time, the piper calls my name or the owl, according to your traditions. I have the silver to protect my dead eyes for the crossing of the river sticks but the gods damned that flow and sent me down another estuary as they have another river for me to cross this time perhaps it will lead to the ocean of eternity and bliss perhaps 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 but they promised me happy ever after in this existence. So I must be good and cool my heels and my ardour, said the spider to the fly. Grandmother spider, be kind, be kind to your little one. I humbly beseech you, lest there be more berserker, banshee, shrieking, sorry, screeching on my part. I am so tired, so very tired. Forgive me. And the hashtags I put under it say psychedelic dreamer, Warrior Goddess, Unrequited Love Muppet, Move Along, No Thing to See Here, and Smiley Face, Smart Ass. Still in 2020, photo my very handsome foster cat socks castle errands lying in the dirt sunning himself swollen hands from working damn it I get these like Pockets of fluid under the knuckles, which I think is, I don't know what causes it, neither did the doctor, but I think it's got something to do with my arthritis. I sort of have permanent little watery pockets, even now. And when I work too hard, they get, I mean, even that's quite swollen. I haven't done any work today. But um, yeah, it's odd. 
doctor, the doctor, the GP doesn't know what causes it, but then they they make a point of not knowing a lot of things these days. Am I right? And they'd rather not now know because then they might have to actually do something to treat you properly and give you continued um, lifespan on this planet. Am I right? They're all under the control of um, Big Pharma and their alien overlords. And there's no logical reason why people who dedicated themselves to the healing profession should suddenly, in the last four years, obfuscate their roles. You know, as Mr. Spock would say in um, Star Trek, it's just not logical. Anyway, no point being angry or bitter about it. It is what it is. It's our world we've created now and we must find a way to survive it. One day at a time, sweet Moses. One breath at a time. Even with my very difficult, stubborn lungs and my attitude and my uh, obsessive, compulsive bladder signalling, I um I will survive, part of me, until such time that I no longer survive, and uh, it is what it is, people. Tired and sore, but happy. This is me after working so hard on my projects that my hands were swollen, but you can't tell by looking at me. I look pretty good there, considering. Mama T. Looks like I just had my hair done, like, that day too, because it looks, yeah, it looks all blow wave down the bottom. I look pretty, I look pretty good there. <laughs> oh, well. I've just got to, like, flow through life it's all it's all beautiful people in a way it's a kind of magic in it what are cars tonight 6 48 p.m now i suppose yeah people still coming home from work and dinners and what have you 14th of may 2019 i'm battling exhaustion again I'm glad I had a good week last oh good week last week. Friday was wonderful, but down the rabbit hole I go. Just gonna close my curtains. Mama T Close the curtains have a little bit of privacy and also I won't be quite as distracted by every car that drives past. Down the rabbit hole I go. I'm looking forward to catching up with Jared soon. I will have to surface from my subterranean chamber and be my usual effervescent self smiley face. I spent most of today in bed resting. Life is good, even if it is unproductive and in 2019 I posted this uh, cover photo which I'm trying to remember where that was I think that was down at Newstead near where my daughter lived near where I caught the bus or, and or the ferry and anyway I liked it I thought it was great a little bit of graffiti or art on the brickwork there so I took a, took a photograph of it. I'm forever blowing bubbles. When you don't know what to do with life, go outside and blow some bubbles and be happy and honour your inner child. 14th of May 2018. 
road tripping to Byron. Ah, so that's where that lovely shot of Beauregard came from. And you can just see Crystal driving. I let her drive my car. She loved driving my car. It is a wonderful car though. <laughs> Here's a photo of Byron Bay. You can just make out the uh, the lighthouse there. It's a very beautiful place. And uh, what else have we got here? A photo of Crystal on the beach. Looking happy. And what else? photo of Jared taking a photo of something with little Harvey by his side and uh, yes lovely and then I posted some photos that Jared or a photo that Jared took from his camera which his camera and his phone was took really spectacular photos much better than my iPhone so um, sometimes I'd say to him, can you send me the photos that you've taken because they'll be vastly better, which he was always happy to do. Here I write, we found an amazing new shop in Byron near the main beach end that sells gorgeous crystal skulls. Here's a photo of my beautiful Beauregard digging frantically in the sand, which was one of his favourite things to do when he was at Byron. He'd start digging and digging and digging and digging. And he was so strong and he would kick so much sand everywhere. And he'd be so happy and being a real dog, you know, it was just gorgeous. Oh, I miss him. I really do. Home from Byron Bay, Crystal and Jared took turns driving as I was very unwell today. So glad I managed to enjoy the beauty of Byron in spite of feeling so disassociated and sick in my stomach. I am an intrepid, determined bitch. The dogs loved running along Belongeal Beach and I did manage to have a paddle in the surf. The sea was so clear and it's kind of my happy place so you know even if I don't feel well when I'm when I go there often it's just enough to um, uplift my spirit. <clears throat> 4th of May 2017 Pedophilia network exposed in Australia. It starts at the top, just like in the USA and UK. It's an article by organicandhealthy.org. And I commented, ghastly reading at 4.30am when my lungs are squeezing the life out of me. This evil shit has to stop. Yes, it does. It really does. Happy Mother's Day to all the women who gave so much to so many. You rock. 14th of May 2016, 5.03am, home from a great night out, very, very sore feet. I was starving so I made a stir fry with rice vermicelli, old looking mushrooms, oh that was brave Tanya, a zucchini, two eggs, an onion and some garlic, which was also epically brave since I'm allergic to them now, and a tiny tin of creamed corn and two tomatoes. Yum! Cooking at 4.30am was a bit odd, but worth it. I just felt like vegetables instead of my usual end-of-night maccas. Now sitting on my couch, Eating and drinking, 
and feeling all my nerve endings in my feet. My nose is itchy, I don't know why. And feeling all my nerve endings in my feet jangling like one giant raw nerve of dead meat. But I had a nice time and I can sleep later and I am free. Single, sexy mama, no complications or general BS for a change. Oh, oh, and I went really wild and lavished myself by putting my electric blanket back on the bed. So next time it is a cold night, I can snuggle into my pillow top, doona and electric blanket. I may never come out of hibernation until next weekend for the dancing, darlings, the dancing. Today I bought a coffee plunger for the coffee beans Margaret gave me. I am impressed with how nice it is. I rarely drink coffee at home, but needed to pick myself up. Yummy. 1.54pm. Up and at him as Bobo won't let me sleep. He is lonely, so we are sitting outside. He is gnawing his huge bone under my chair. I had the remainder of the stir fry for breakfast and or lunch. Beautiful day. Still hungry, but need to buy food. Ugh, I abhor supermarkets. I really do. I am still tired too. 14th of May 2015. I'm freezing cold tonight, sitting on the lounge wrapped in an old sleeping bag with socks beside me making strange old man noises of general feline contentment. Little moans and groans and snoring and sort of heavy breathing. He actually gave me a hug earlier by stretching his forepaws out across my chest. Lovely boy. And I miss him terribly too. 8.21am. I have barely slept. I chatted to Nigel until 3am. Spent till 4.30am struggling to set up my new Netflix setup box. Drove me insane as I was not getting it right as I had the wrong remote laughing out loud. Then I went to bed, utterly shattered. I have to take the car in for a service at long last at 1.30pm. I'm wide awake but still tired. Bloody hell. Netflix looks like it is going to be awesome. Six months free. Happy, grateful woman here. Now to snooze for a few more hours. 14th of May 2014. I had my three weekly debrief. I always feel better after that. I've been out making a fire in honour of the full moon. Made my manifestation wishes. Oi. Pardon me. <clears throat> One day they will come true. Ten years later and... Um, well, almost but not quite. <laughs> you have to laugh sometimes. I did quite a bit of washing too, but it will all smell smoky from the fire. Oh well, I just had a shower to wash all the smoke out of my hair. The garden is looking nice. I might plant some more night flowering plants since I rarely see daylight anymore. My night scented jessamine is always a delight and the dragon fruit flowers were spectacular at night. Unfortunately, I lost them all due to rain. My doctor says I have CPTSD plus and a mixed attachment style, a high level of emotional intelligence 
and I'm highly intelligent. All that combined makes me the way I am. He also reminded me that my depression is seasonal and he expected me to slump and have a quiet period during winter while I gear up again for more wildness in spring. I said, yeah, like a rabbit, and we laughed. He asked me what I liked about my current chat I am interested in. I said, I never know these things, but it is nice he can string sentences together and enunciate. I got rather too good at translating Neolithic diatribe with my former grunting partners. I can have a decent conversation with this one. So my doctor says, and he probably actually understands what enunciate means too. Sometimes I wish my doctor would be my life partner. This is called transference, so I'm not going there. I can't risk my therapeutic alliance. However, my psychiatrist totally gets how my brain is wired. Plus, he gets my sense of humour. Plus, he is always boosting my morale and validating me. He gets paid handsomely by the Australian government to look after me. But I must say, he is fantastic all the same. I am very fortunate to have such a kind, supportive man in my corner. As he said to me, I am looking for a real love as well as the passion and a man I can call my own and be a family with. I wish I could accomplish these things, but the kind of man I need in my life is not usually attracted to me due to my independence and CPTSD and strength. Well, we shall see what this full moon brings. If Hashem wants me safe and happy and adored, then it will happen in time. As time is a human construct and relative, I will have to bloody well keep waiting and hoping and most of all, dancing, cavorting and enjoying the rest of my life Hashem has permitted me. I deserve to be wild, free and happy. I posted a video, cat meeting baby for the first time is precious. Hmm. And I commented, my tully leapt up on my lap with my newborn crystal bundled on my lap. She got such a shock to see there was a tiny human in my lap. The look on her face was priceless. She accepted crystal in our household right away. She was a wonderful cat. And it's kind of funny because I mentioned her today in conversation with my hairdresser Kylie. And um, here she is mentioned again. Yeah, another little synchronicity. Hauled out of bed reluctantly, showered, hair washed, rushed to the bus to get to my wonderful psychiatrist for my three weekly debrief. Crystal has my car all week, which is rather annoying. She promised to pick me up after my appointment. There is something insane about being picked up in your own car that you fought for like a demon to get the money for for two and a half years. She is saving to go to Europe while I am broke and having to share my car with her. At least she helps with the red joe. I'm thinking if this keeps up, I should sell the car and go to Europe myself. Lol. Oh well, 
Mother's love runs strong and deep. Things you do to keep your kids happy and employed. Indeed. Fourteenth of May, two thousand and thirteen. I saw the preview of Metamorphosis, starring Crystal as the mother last night. It was awesome, and her acting superb. Very happy, proud mother here. It is playing at the shed every night until Saturday. Just wonderful. My Mother's Day was weird and spiritual and will go down in my personal history as the most unusual Mother's Day ever. Still processing all of it in my head. One reconciliation, one new connection, several emotional triggers by an arse on Pal Talk. Lots of loving kindness from my beautiful friend Duckstar to heal me from the psycho healer. Then I met up with Gail and Talia for the first time in eight months, which was nice. Then I went out and danced and met a very unusual man. Well, that is nothing new, as all the men I attract are highly unusual. So more triggering, but in a good way. Smiley face. Events unfolded thick and fast and boy was I tired after all the mysterious triggers, frenetic activity and the kaleidoscope of emotions. Last night I went to see Crystal's play with Jared and Christian and we had a fabulous time together. Proud and happy mother here. Smiley face. Update 2020. I hesitated to share this, but then remembered who the connection was. Dead Elvis, who frankly was a user and should just remain dead. But Mama T let him in at that magical moment as she lived for decades as a zombie, so understood the trauma and suffering, and the mad clown's need to make fun with that. He popped back into and out of my life on the 26th of May 2018 to tell me he was an AA and had taken my advice to get his shit together. So I was happy for him, but he was incapable of being decent to me. So there is that. Anyway, he was not my true love. So I told him to stay away for another five or even ten years. But really I meant forever, as the Tanya is incorporating her dickhead free zone. My true love played a much longer game with me. And well, well, it's endless. And in the lap of some very determined Māori spirits who mysteriously have entered my life recently and insist it's all going to happen soon. But they were wrong about that particular man. It never happened. He never wasn't capable of being a good man to the Tanya. But they were half right because I'm getting lots of the most beautiful, sweet, honouring attention from my soul kin. And you know what? At the appointed time when the gods smile upon me, my true love might even make his intentions, you know, um, declare his intentions towards me and it, I might even have a true loving partnership in, in the future, hopefully not too distant future, but 
sits in the lap of the gods as always, people. The spirit world don't live in human time constructs or always comprehend free will. So the Tanya is sitting back and cooling her heels. I have had some lovely few weeks with children visiting me with their mother, delighting in my pets and garden and bringing their own magic. I'm not sure why I'm getting pain across my arm here. I don't know what that is, but it's a bit, a bit uncomfortable, people. Life is good even without my beloved in it. And um, I don't even know why I loved that one so much. She brought me nothing, really, really nothing but constant emotional abuse and pain. So it is what it is, people. 14th of May 2012. Karen Reviews wrote, Hey Tanya, how did it go? Me, I replied, I got shafted. I agreed to settle for 159000 My lawyers cut their costs from 140000 to 100000 to put forty k into my hand. Shares agreed to give me 19 k only, but I keep mum's chattels and these stupid, worthless solar air conditioners that were actually just shells. There was nothing. They were just box of metal. It was a scam. They scammed. They scammed me. It doesn't matter now. They used as leverage for the past two years. Oh, they really were dirty, evil, cuntish cunts. So all up, I got fifty nine thousand and um. 10 grand went in my two front teeth and I bought my car and I gave $10,000 to my daughters and, you know, bought a few other bits and bobs, you know, like my bed and a few other, you know, a few other bits and bobs. And then I was back to being broke again, people, after two and a half years of constant struggle and, by the way, feeling suicidal four times during that legal battle. It was just completely evil what I was put through. So now I have to wait a few months to get my money. My sister, after declaring me dead last October, has written a nasty email to my lawyer so she may try to cause problems for me getting my poultry settlement, which is disgusting as she walked away from the fight last year. So I'm shattered, as you would expect, but it's almost over now, so I can hit the restart button on my life's computer program and put the past associations with my family behind me and bury it. New life, new me, finally free of all their ugly, dirty, lying, slanderous, betrayals and bullshit. Karen replied, That sucks, but 59k is way better than the thousand dollars you started with though. Just think about that. You will feel so much better once this is all over. Treat yourself to something really, really special. I feel like vomiting that the lawyers get 100k of your money. How revolting. I replied, yes, and told me they would not fight on for me as it was no longer a commercial prospect. So if I chose to keep fighting, I would have to self-represent and to smug good luck with that comment was added to my vast violation and devastation as well. Seems everyone had a ride on my ass, and once the milk cow dried up, they slaughtered me as well. Just disgusting, but at least it is soon to be over. Like they really were. It was just, 
It was just putrid, man. It was beyond fucking putrid. Sally Castle wrote, So sorry to hear this, Tanya. I suppose it being over will be good, but it's very sad that your lawyers took so much. They must be absolutely heartless. Keep strong. It has to get better from here. Kiss. Me. In the end, the most hurtful thing of all is my lawyers caved for the money and are giving me charity of 40k from their rightful costs. So actually think they are doing something good for me. They let those lying, slanderous bitches win and in the end wouldn't fight for me any longer. So the whole family provisions thing that I had a legal right to more money was a big fat lie since they would not go on to fight for it. It's just too awful to contemplate and why does this keep happening to me? Question mark. Why indeed? So if you even sniff at me that I need a lawyer, I actually completely break down now. I've been financially raped by enough lawyers in my lifetime over and over and over again. By the way, my half-sister is a lawyer by profession too. They're just... I'm not saying all lawyers are bad. I'm sure there are some nice ones out there, but not the ones I experienced, people. 14th of May, 2011. Extremely tired, disappointed and dissolute, but tomorrow is another day in paradise. So I shall eat and be merry, breathe in, breathe out, because millions won't have that opportunity tomorrow or another day and live in the cosmic consciousness of the here and now. If you read between the lines, I'm using mindfulness there to get through that particular day in 2011. I finished reading... The way of the peaceful warrior and enjoyed its spiritual epithets. But the reality is dust, dust, dust. We are spirits having a physical experience and constantly craving for the metaphysical. And man, all those gymnastics and leaping off tall buildings in a single bound Way too much hard work for me. Off to psychedelic dream and hopefully I will wake up. And on that note, uh, thus concludes today's readings of even date. And uh, yeah, it's uh, currently 7.18pm, 20 degrees Celsius, my laptop says. Don't know if that's right, but anyway. And um, yes, wherever you are in the space-time continuum, I bid you good evening and good night. Have a beautiful day. Oh, my eyes look black underneath because I had my eyelashes done today. So they're not bruises, darling. They're just, you know, the schmutz from getting my eyes, my eyelashes tinted. And... Um, but I am tired. I am quite tired, though. So I'm going to go and watch a little bit of TV, and then I'm going to head to bed early, I think. I feel quite quite tired and drained today. Um, so um, kisses to and from the multiverses, and to and from the Tanya, and to and from the fairy realms. And um, stay free, stay wild. Stay happy no matter what. It's the best revenge, people. Hold your true beloveds precious and 
love them truly and deeply and honouringly and never cede, never quit, never yield to your enemies and um, live defiantly and triumphantly and manifest joy as much as you possibly can in every moment and every day and uh, live your best life. L'chaim. Bye for now.